Before we look at the use of one of the calculators that comes with Proc Engineering App, we want everyone to know that Proc Engineering App is the most powerful application available on handheld devices or on the internet for performing process and chemical engineering calculations. So today, let's demonstrate the evaporation calculator. We will begin by opening the app from the introductory screen. Note that if the user has not interacted with the app in the last 20 minutes, the connection will time out. If you continue to interact with the app, it will not time out. This timeout is in place to conserve resources. If that happens, simply click the Start App button again. We will go down the table of contents until we arrive at the section for Combined Heat and Mass Transfer Operations. Then we will select Evaporation from the drop-down submenu. The application allows us to perform calculations on either double effect or triple effect evaporators. It allows us to use either enthalpy data or specific heat data, depending upon what we have available. It allows us to use either metric or English units of measurement, and also allows us to change back and forth between units. So let's look at this example. This diagram depicts a double effect evaporator. The flow path of the liquid feed and the product is from right to left as opposed to what one may typically expect. The reason for this is such that we can think more in terms of vapor flow, which is the flow from left to right, as it is the one that is serving the more unusual purpose in this process, and as the evaporator effects are conventionally numbered. With double effect evaporation, the vapor off the first effect is used as the energy source to vaporize the second effect. The Proc Engineer app evaporation calculator will assume that the solvent being evaporated is water, as is most commonly the case. With enough user demand, the option to select another solvent may be added. In this example, a feed stream consisting of 15% phosphoric acid is to be concentrated to 75% utilizing double effect evaporation. As shown, the feed flow rate is 9,000 pounds per hour at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The energy source is steam at 332 degrees Fahrenheit. We wish to know how much steam will be required, the efficiency of the steam usage, the concentration of acid in the second effect, and the pressure in each effect. There are several input variables on which we have to make a judgment and then refine them in a repetitive manner. The better our judgment, the fewer repetitions necessary. That is, the acid concentration of the stream out of the second effect is unknown. Therefore, the boiling point rise and heat capacity is unknown. So we will assume a pressure in the second effect along with the associated boiling point rise then the heat capacity and the pressure in the first effect will be calculated. By estimating what the pressure may be in the first effect, the boiling point rise and heat capacity will be estimated as input. The overall heat transfer coefficients for each boiler will be assumed. There are many sources available for enthalpy concentration diagrams, specific heat data, and boiling point data, such as these for phosphoric acid. Rather than enthalpy data, we will use heat capacities in this example. So we know that the boiling point of 75% phosphoric acid at atmospheric pressure is 275 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a boiling point rise of 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature difference between the steam and this acid boiling point is then 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So we will assume that the first effect will operate at 14.7 PSIA. Therefore, we will then have to assume that the second effect will operate under a vacuum. Let us assume 5 PSIA. We know the specific heat of 75% acid at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, and we can guess at the concentration, boiling point rise, 
and related specific heat of acid in the second effect. Now we will put this data into our evaporation calculator as follows. The feed conditions of rate, concentration, and heat capacity. The third effect is not applicable and therefore disabled. In the second effect, we have the overall heat transfer coefficient, the designated pressure, assumed boiling point rise, and heat capacity. In the first effect, we again have the assumed heat transfer coefficient, the designated pressure, boiling point rise, and heat capacity. And finally, we have the desired final phosphoric acid concentration, the steam temperature, and difference between steam temperature and first effect boiling point. Then we will calculate and find that the concentration of acid from the second effect is 25%. This agrees with our assumption with the associated boiling point rise and heat capacity. If it deviated, we would adjust our assumptions and calculate again until the results and assumptions converge. We see for this case, the steam consumption is 4,630 pounds per hour. The difference in temperature between effects is 48.74 degrees Fahrenheit. The average area of each evaporator is 143.46 square feet. The steam economy is 1.56 pounds of water evaporated per pound of steam utilized. And the total amount of evaporation is 7,200 pounds per hour with 3,813 coming from the first effect and the balance coming from the second effect.